Hi everyone, welcome to science. I'm Miss Catherine, your guide for our matter and energy and ecosystems unit. So let's get started today with lesson 2.2 called how carbon dioxide enters the air. Um, as usual today, you will need a pen or a pencil and some lined paper to record your thoughts. And optional but always encourage is that access to Amplify Online. We will be using the sim today as well as a modeling tool. And having a family member nearby or a friend on video chat is again always helpful to share your ideas. Pause the video if you need to gather your materials. And for those of you following along on Amplify Online today, again here is your click path for getting to lesson 2.2. And on your paper, please set up your typical heading with our unit title and our lesson 2.2 title, How Carbon Dioxide Enters the Air. Oh, my cat's coming to say hi today. So last time we figured out that in an ecosystem, the producers, the consumers, and the decomposers all give off carbon dioxide to the abiotic matter. It's not just the consumers. It's not just the animals that do this. It's the animals, it's the plants, it's those um, decomposers that, again, break down um, an organism that is dead or dying um, and gets its energy storage molecules that way. So on your paper, please pause the video and record this key concept as we're gonna use this idea today. And beneath that key concept, go ahead and make sure you've recorded our decomposer vocabulary term. Awesome. So when we were reading about decomposers last lesson, trying to determine if in fact they do uh, give off carbon dioxide into the abiotic matter, we read about or were introduced to a process called cellular respiration. And we very briefly saw this diagram. For our warm-up thinking today, and again, this is activity one, if you're following along online, I would like you to please pause the video, take some time to really analyze this image, and answer this question. What do you think this diagram shows about cellular respiration? So today we're gonna to investigate this process of cellular respiration a little bit more closely and really specifically think about what does this process have to do with giving off carbon dioxide and how exactly do organisms give off carbon dioxide into the abiotic matter of an ecosystem in the first place. Oh, Margo is just really excited here today. Say hi. To learn about carbon dioxide. Okay, so let's use the sim to investigate this question a little bit further. And when we are using the sim today, we're gonna zoom inside um, of a particular part of the cells, um, just as we did when we were investigating photosynthesis inside the cells of producers, we zoomed in on a specific part of the cell called a chloroplast. Today, we're gonna zoom in on a specific part of the cell called a mitochondrion. Okay, mitochondrion with an N at the end is singular. Mitochondria with an A at the end is plural. So when you're in the sim today, you're gonna think about these um, four questions here around what you are observing. So what molecules are entering this mitochondrion? What molecules are exiting the mitochondrion? What do you think this then means about the function of this mitochondria. Like what does it do based on what's going inside and out of it? And then what does this model or what does the SIM model show about how organisms give off carbon dioxide? So if you have access to the SIM in Amplify Online, go ahead and pause the video, get to your SIM, explore and answer these questions. Otherwise, you can follow along with me. So I'm gonna move over to my Amplify uh, tab here, and I'm gonna access the SIM with the shortcut. So remember, if I go to the little um, three line stack menu here, I can get to my SIMs much faster. And we're looking again at the matter and energy and ecosystem SIM. And since this one takes me a minute to load, I already have it um, up and ready. And I'm not gonna manipulate anything here. I'm just gonna hit 
play. Um, Cause again, I'm not testing anything. I'm just observing uh, processes happening within the cell. And my directions again stated that I want to um, look at what's happening inside of the cell. So in my SIM, I'm gonna click on view cell. And again, my directions were specifically asking for me to observe what's happening in the mitochondrion. We had already looked at the chloroplasts previously when we were investigating how photosynthesis uh, produces energy storage molecules. Right now we're considering how cellular respiration produces carbon dioxide. And I'm gonna focus on the mitochondrion part to do that. So remember I should be observing right now things going in and things going out of this particular mitochondrion. What that might mean about this part of the cell's function or job. And then what this overall model, again, is showing about how organisms give off carbon dioxide. Do remember we have our key up here for what those little tiny color and shape particles look like. So I've spent some time observing this mitochondrion here in a producer cell. I'm gonna check it out in some of the other cells of the other um, living things within the other biotic things within our ecosystem. As last lesson, we figured out that all of these things give off carbon dioxide. So I need to check all of them out right now in this investigation. So let's go to our consumers. These are those things within the ecosystem that need to eat other things like producers to get their energy storage molecules. Okay, and there's a mitochondrion again, watching things go in. Got those little blue, light blue circles for oxygen going in. Oh, I'm also seeing that orange one with the black dots, that energy storage molecule going in. And coming out right there, I just saw those um, trapezoid, I think that's what that's called, um, shape, that's blue, that's water. And I just saw some, I think, carbon dioxide, those little tri or those little diamonds coming out. So let's double check. Oh, yep, there's some. Okay. So let's check that out in the secondary consumer. A secondary consumer is a consumer that consumes consumers. So if I look here, it's things like snakes, um, spiders, snakes eat small mammals like a, a mouse and a spider can eat other bugs. Um, so it's things that eat consumers. So they're not vegetarians. Okay, there's my mitochondrion again. I'm watching what goes in. Oh, again, I'm seeing some oxygen, some energy storage molecules coming out. I saw some carbon dioxide and some water. And let's check that on our decomposers again, those things that feed off of dead and dying matter. And again, I'm seeing some water going in, energy storage molecule going in. Or I'm sorry, oxygen going in, energy storage molecule going in, and water and carbon dioxide coming out. All right, so if I go back and I consider what I was to be observing here. I noticed what's entering the mitochondrion is oxygen and energy storage molecules. And that was true for all of the mitochondrion that we looked at within all of the different types of biotic um, components of our ecosystem. And what's exiting again for all of those was water and carbon dioxide. And so what do you think this means about the function of mitochondrion? Well, to me, that means if I'm trying to investigate how organisms give off carbon dioxide, and I just observed a mitochondrion giving off carbon dioxide, that to me means that the function or the job of this part of the cell has something to do with giving off of carbon dioxide. That chemical reaction that would create or rearrange uh, molecules to make carbon dioxide, okay? And 
that connects exactly to what we were just uh, viewing in this image earlier in our warm up thinking today. Well, I just saw within the sim this mitochondrion, which is shown right here in our image, take in energy storage molecules, take in oxygen, and release from that carbon dioxide and water. And so we were just observing in the sim this process of cellular respiration. And so cellular respiration is the chemical reaction between oxygen and glucose that releases energy into cells. At this time, please pause the video and add this vocabulary term, cellular respiration, to your paper underneath our key concept and our other vocabulary term of decomposer from earlier in today's lesson. So in our definition of cellular respiration, I wanna point out again that this term glucose here refers to those energy storage molecules. If you recall from chapter one, we looked at a couple of different kinds of energy storage molecules, as that's a general term for some things that are a little bit more specific, um, that glucose is one type of energy storage molecule. Um, so in your definition, you might, if you're confused, want to circle that word glucose um, and underneath it write energy storage molecule or ESM for short, if you don't want to write it all out, to remind yourself what that glucose term really is referring to. So this cellular respiration process is a second type of chemical reaction in this unit that we've discovered occurs within cells. Photosynthesis was that first type. And in chapter one, when we were looking at photosynthesis, we realized that the amount of sunlight really can determine along with the amount of um, carbon dioxide available and the amount of water available can really determine how much energy storage molecules are produced from that process of photosynthesis. So I'm wondering right now if sunlight matters in cellular respiration the same way that it matters in photosynthesis. So let's check that out again in the sim. So I'm gonna pause, ask you to pause the video here again in a minute um, and use the sim to once again observe cellular respiration, but this time really paying particular attention again to making sure we know which parts of the ecosystem do this process and what is sort of the limiting factors of the process? Is sunlight and is the amount of sunlight affecting how these parts of an ecosystem produce cellular respiration? Because again, I know that the amount of sunlight mattered when it came to photosynthesis. So I'm, I'm curious if it matters the same way here in cellular respiration. So if you have access to the sim, pause the video, explore and answer these questions. Otherwise, again, follow along with me. And I still have my, my sim up and running from earlier. I didn't, I didn't change anything. So the first thing I'm gonna double check is to make sure that I, I am getting all of my components of the, of the ecosystem that produce uh, carbon dioxide through cellular respiration. I wanna make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. And I'm gonna double check that right now by looking for the mitochondria because I just determined that the function of a mitochondria earlier is, is this uh, process of cellular respiration producing um, carbon dioxide, just like the function of a chloroplast was to um, produce this function of photosynthesis and um, expel or put out their energy storage molecules, okay? So I'm, I'm just gonna double check here. So producers, if you sell, mitochondrion, check. Does cellular respiration. Consumer, if you sell, mitochondrion, check. Does cellular respiration. Secondary consumers, if you sell, mitochondrion, check. Do cellular respiration. Decomposers, if you sell, so mitochondrion. So once again, yep, check. Decomposers, do cellular respiration. I don't have any other options to view cells. Like I can't down here view cells of dead matter or anything like that. So for the information that I have, yep, these things are um, the ones 
who have mitochondrion and therefore are the ones conducting this chemical reaction of cellular respiration. So I, I've answered that first question. Again, how I know that is that the cells of these four things all contain mitochondrion. Okay, so now I need to check out this second question about sunlight and does the amount of sunlight affect which parts of the ecosystem are performing cellular respiration, okay? Because um, again, it mattered, the amount of sunlight mattered in photosynthesis. I'm just curious to see if it matters here in cellular respiration. Um, so I'm going to um, turn my sun here on low. You could also turn it off. Um, and I'm gonna view my cell of my producers, paying attention to my mitochondrion. I'm looking for carbon dioxide still being produced for this cellular respiration, uh, chemical reaction to still happen. Looks like it's still happening there. Going to my consumers. Again, I'm checking to make sure I still have cellular respiration occurring, still producing carbon dioxide. Oh, and there I am. And if I continue down the line here to all of the other uh, biotic components of my ecosystem, I'm going to see again that I'm still producing carbon dioxide from my mitochondrion, which means I still have cellular respiration occurring and therefore sunlight and the amount of it is not impacting um, which parts of the ecosystem still perform cellular respiration. And in my observation here of cellular respiration, I'm kind of thinking that it's very similar to this process of photosynthesis, except for that fact that photosynthesis needs energy from the sunlight um, to make it happen, and cellular respiration didn't. Um, and they're kind of opposite processes, because if I look at what the inputs are in photosynthesis, I'm bringing in energy, carbon dioxide, and water. Those are sort of the things that I'm getting out of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration, I'm releasing energy, releasing carbon dioxide, and releasing water. So the inputs of photosynthesis are the outputs of cellular respiration. And the inputs of cellular respiration, glucose and oxygen, are the outputs of photosynthesis, glucose and oxygen. So these two processes are um, both important in our um, ecosystem because one helps um, produce energy storage molecules and the other helps to use those energy storage molecules for organisms to get energy. Um, so they're opposite processes, and they both um, really demonstrate that cycling of carbon in this form of carbon dioxide from the abiotic to the biotic and then back to the abiotic components of our ecosystem. Photosynthesis takes abiotic carbon dioxide from the air and turns it into biotic carbon in an energy storage molecule. And cellu cellular respiration takes a biotic carbon atom in the form of an energy storage molecule and turns it back into an abiotic form of carbon within carbon dioxide in the air. So we now have enough information to answer this investigation question for today. How do organisms give off carbon dioxide through this process of cellular respiration? And we're gonna show our understanding of this here next uh, with a model. If you have access to Amplify Online, you're gonna use the modeling tool that you find um, here within activity three, the link is right there. And if you don't have access to Amplify Online or you don't wanna make a digital model, you are welcome to draw your own right there on your paper. Again, our goal of our model today is to show where carbon dioxide in the air comes from. And we wanna do that by including all of the components that are involved in this process, not just one component giving off carbon dioxide, but all of them. 
And we want to show that movement of how the carbon dioxide got from these components um, up into the air. And we want to name the process that's uh, responsible for this movement of carbon dioxide into the air of an ecosystem, as well as the inputs and the outputs of that process. If you recall, we made a model similar to this one um, showing how photosynthesis creates um, energy storage molecules. And we set up that model to kind of mimic what we're seeing in the sim. So if I go to my modeling tool, um, I have the air up here, like we saw the air in the sim. And down below here, I'm gonna set up the components from my options that are involved in this process of getting carbon um, into the form of carbon dioxide up into the air. So if you'd like, go ahead and pause the video at this time and try to show your understanding of where carbon dioxide in the air comes from on your own model and then come back to check your work. All right, so how did you do? Um, I'm gonna think through my model right now and as I do that, go ahead and check your model in your modeling tool or on your paper. And if there is something that I am showing in my model that is different from your model, um, go ahead and make that change. So again, I am trying to show where carbon dioxide comes from and I need to start with the components responsible for the process that gets me carbon dioxide into the air. Um, so from the sim earlier, I saw that producers do this. So I'm gonna drag producer over. Uh, primary consumers do this. Secondary consumers, as well as decomposers. Okay, so I have them all set up. And uh, the process by which these four things release carbon dioxide into the air is that cellular respiration process. So I'm going to find that um, and I'm going to add that process or start to add that process to all four. And when I go here to select the process, I need to um, name, is it photosynthesis or is it cellular respiration? And here, since I'm trying to show how I get carbon dioxide into the air, um, I'm going to choose cellular respiration. And right now, this I'm showing this within my producer. And the um, output that I'm trying to show here of cellular respiration is carbon dioxide. So I'm going to put that in my outputs. And I also know that energy isn't needed as an input in this process, but it is an output of this process. And energy is an output of this process because energy storage molecules or those things that give us energy are the input, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show that all four of these things do this process of cellular respiration. And therefore all four of these things, these components are responsible for releasing carbon dioxide into the air. And remember this energy that I'm putting over here as an output, this is that energy we were talking about earlier um, at the start of the unit where these, these living things need energy to, to grow and to survive and to reproduce. Um, so that's what that output energy here in this process is referring to, okay? So I have my four components. I have them conducting the process of cellular respiration. I have the inputs and the outputs of that process of cellular respiration in all four of these um, components responsible. Now I just need to show that movement of carbon dioxide from each of these four biotic components into that abiotic air. So I'm gonna select my arrow. Remember in models, we um, use arrows to help us show movement. And we wanna pay particular attention to the direction of the arrow um, because the arrow isn't going into these things, it's coming out of these into the air. So I wanna make sure that my pointy end of my arrow um, is indeed 
up, okay? And I have a label on my arrow because that's how my modeling tool is set up, showing that this arrow is representing carbon dioxide. It has that same um, symbol as the carbon dioxide in my air. But if you're not using the modeling tool, you're going to need to add that label. Same thing with cellular respiration, inputs, outputs, you're going to need to add those labels. So double check your model that you have four components of our ecosystem, all labeled, conducting this process of cellular respiration, releasing carbon dioxide into the air. All right, nice job. So now we are ready um, to write to our Econauts and explain to them in words what our model is showing. So at this time, you're gonna pause the video and you're gonna write to the Econauts explaining how your model that we just created shows where carbon dioxide in the air of an ecosystem comes from. And as you write your explanation, we wanna make sure that we're using all of these terms in this word bank as a part of our response, because we just showed all of those things, all of those terms in our model. And we wanna make it really clear to our Econauts what's going on. As remember, they don't have an ecology expert like ourselves as a part of our team. At this time, pause the video and either on your paper or in activity three, write an explanation to the Econauts of how your model is showing where carbon dioxide in the air is coming from. Great work today. So as we reflect and wrap up lesson 2.2, it would be awesome for you to message your science teacher. I know I miss my students so much. I miss seeing them every day and saying hi and um, hearing how they're doing and listening to their science thinking. Um, and I know that your science teacher feels the same way. So message them between now and next class and say hi, just tell them what you're up to. Um, are you playing Animal Crossing? Are you napping? Um, just let them know how you're doing. And while you do that, explain to them this process of cellular respiration and how it works to move carbon from energy storage molecules, which are biotic matter, to carbon dioxide in the air, um, which is the abiotic matter um, of an ecosystem. They'd love to hear all of these awesome and amazing things that you figured out. And if you're curious on knowing more about photosynthesis and cellular respiration, particularly in producers, as that was surprising to us to figure out producers do both of those processes, um, go ahead and complete lesson uh, 2.2 activity five in Amplify Online to read a little bit more about both of those processes. I'll see you next time.